Hey, River Church, how you guys doing today? My name is Billy, and I'll be leading you guys through today's devotional. I love you guys. I uh, miss you guys a lot. Uh, Lisa and I have been praying for y'all, and we hope this video uh, we hope this video finds you guys well. Um, today we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 6, uh, and it's the part of the Lord's Prayer. Now, today we're actually not going to talk about the Lord's Prayer, uh, but we're going to talk about the section just before the Lord's Prayer, where Jesus is teaching about prayer. Uh, it's in Matthew chapter 6, and it'll be verses 5 through 8. And it reads, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard by their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Um, so this prayer, I'm sorry, not this prayer, but this teaching is found uh, in, in the earlier chapters of Matthew, and specifically it's found in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And so Jesus' Sermon on the Mount is basically, uh, to summarize it simply, it's basically how to live uh, as a Christian to glorify, to glorify God. And so, um, and so th this prayer is, is then how, how, how do we pray, right? How should we pray? Um, and so there's a couple things I want us to notice. Um, it says, verse 5 says, and when you pray, you must not pray like the hypocrites, Right, for they stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners that they may be seen by others. Right? And verse 7 says, when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard by their many words. And so what's going on here? Uh, does Jesus not want you to pray very long, lengthy prayers? Does Jesus not want you to pray in front of people? Um, of course he does, right? That's not, the, that's not the main point here. The point is the heart. And so if you're approaching prayer so that other people can see how awesome of a prayer uh, person you are and how great your words come together, and, and if, you're, if you're seeking others to look at you and think, wow, you're, you're such a great prayer, prayer person, uh, then, then that's what Jesus is speaking to. And he's also saying if, if you just talk and talk and you think that because you speak so much more than somebody else that your prayers are going to be heard more, uh, Jesus is pushing against that, right? Uh, as we talked last week and as, as we're, we're, we're talking this week, Jesus wants to know what's going on inside your heart, right? Jesus wants your heart. Jesus is concerned with what's going on on the inside. Right? He doesn't want you to be praying to, to seek this approval from man. Jesus, Jesus wants you to pray to seek him. Right? I just want to read uh, earlier parts of Matthew chapter 5. It says, uh, <clears throat> and when he first started uh, the Sermon on the Mount, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger for thirst and righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, right? And so there's this idea of this humility, this, this selflessness, okay? That Jesus is looking not uh, uh, for how well you perform in relation to other people, but Jesus is looking at your heart. Why are you praying? Uh, and so I'd, I'd hope to encourage you that way as, as we come before the Lord and as we, we seek uh, to, 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 as we seek him in prayer, uh, I, I would encourage us in the sense that we don't need to have all the words together. Okay. We don't need to, uh, make all of our prayers sound perfect and awesome. And we don't need to pray better than pastor Andrew. We don't need to pray in, in a way that's better than your favorite preacher. Hopefully it's pastor Andy. <laughs> um, do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's this heart, this heart behind your prayer, this sincere heart behind your prayers. So I'd like to encourage you that way. Like I said, if, 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 if you sometimes fumble through prayers uh, and things of that nature, don't feel like you have to have it all together to come to the Lord. Uh, you can come to him just as you are. And, and I want to leave you guys with this encouraging 
word, and it's found in at the end of 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 this this section that we've been in. It's in, it's found in verse uh, verse eight. It says, um, <clears throat> uh, for uh, it says he's talking about do not pray like them, uh, uh, offering up these empty phrases. But it says, uh, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. And I just think that's so beautiful. Like like I don't even know. I don't even know what I need sometimes, right? Uh, I may be pressed in a certain situation. I have no idea what I need, but the Lord knows. And so go to him in prayer. I love you guys. I'll see you all next week.